This is lesson 1.1, understanding area. We're going to go over a few basic formulas first. The area formula for a rectangle would be base times height. The area of a parallelogram is also base times height. But for a parallelogram, you have to make sure that the height is straight up and down. So what I'm referring to is we know a parallelogram looks like this. The height needs to be straight up and down, it needs to be perpendicular, where this would be the base. The rhombus would be the same as base times height and would look the same. The area of the square, most of you like base times height, but since the sides are all the same, we're going to refer to it as side squared. So put that in your formula uh, of tricks. Let's see, first question, the bathroom wall, is 12 feet by 15 feet. So we know we have a bathroom wall that is 12 feet by 15 feet. Okay. You decide to retile a wall. The tiles themselves are 3 inches by 4 inches. The cost of each tile is 49 cents. How many bathroom tiles do you need? Okay, well, there's more information here than you need. Do we really know, need to know the cost of each tile? Does that pertain to our question? No, nope. so that's just extra information that we have. So we're just needing to figure out how many tiles we need to buy. So one's in feet, the other's in inches. Well, we can figure out the area of a tile itself, right? It's 3 by 4, so that's 12 inches squared. What we can then do is we can figure out... Um, how big the wall is in, in inches. Because what do we know uh, that each uh, one foot equals 12 inches. So if we're able to do that, then we can say that this is really 144 inches right here by 15 times 12. So this is 180 when we multiply these two together we can figure out that the area of the wall let's put the wall here the area of the wall is 144 by 180 giving you 25,920 inches squared so this is the size of the wall this is the size of one tile we can take the 25 1920 divided by 12 because we're in inches and inches and we can figure out that we'll need 2160 tiles there are other ways to do it but that is um, one of the ways that I would find it next is find the area of the shaded region All right. So what do we notice? The shaded region is there. So what I see is if I actually finish this up, I see a very large rectangle that I can probably figure out the, the amount of sides. To me, this side is 4 and 5, which makes 9. And this side of the rectangle is 10, 1, and 3. So that's 14. So mathematically, what we can figure out is the area of the big rectangle. And then actually subtract this rectangle here, which is 5 by 2. This rectangle here, which is 3 by 2. And this rectangle here, which is 4 by 1. So this one's 4, this one's 6, this one's 10. The very large one is 9 by 14 which ends up equaling 126. What are we going to do? We're going to subtract the 10, we'll subtract the 6, and we'll subtract the 4. So the final answer is 106. And since there wasn't any units, we have to have some type of units. So we'll put units squared. Next one, find the area of the rectangle to the nearest hundredth. So we want just the rectangle. We don't have any sides of it, but what do we do notice is that um, there's a right 
triangle on top that is isosceles. So this side is also 3 root 2, which then helps us because if this is a right triangle, this is a 45, 45, 90. And so these sides are equal to x and x. This side is x root 2. So we can put in the 3 root 2 times root 2, and that's 3 root 4, which is 3 times 2, which ends up being 6. So what do we figure out is that this side here is 6, which means this side down here is 6. Now we need this side before we can find the area. What do we notice? Oh, we have an angle, and we have a right triangle because it's a rectangle. And so what can we do? We can call upon our friend, Chief Indian, Sokotoa, who will help us answer this problem. So what can we do? We can look at it and over here that's the opposite side. Here is the adjacent side because this is the hypotenuse. So we can say what do we need? We need the tangent. So we got the tangent of 28 is equal to the opposite which is x over 6. We solve this, multiply by 6. When we figure this out we end up getting that the answer is approximately, approximately 3.19026 and then what we can do is since we know that we want to find the area of the rectangle so the area of the rectangle is 6 times the 3.19026 which then the final answer ends up being approximately 19.5 four units squared rounding to the nearest hundredth. Please make sure that you round correctly because rounding will count on um, the upcoming test and quiz. And finally, we're finding the diagonal length of a rectangle. So we'll take a pause. Let's draw a rectangle. Let's draw a diagonal length to do it. Okay. With an area, so the area of the rectangle is 432 inches squared and we know the height so the, the height side is 18 inches okay we want to find the diagonal so what we can do is we can find the base side here first all right so what we can do is we can say okay x times 18 is equal to 432 and we take the 432 divided by 18 all right and x, the other missing side, is 24. So we know this side down here is 24, right? Well, what do we want to do? We need to find this side over here because that's what we want as the diagonal. So we could either look and say we can do Pythagorean theorem and say that c squared is equal to 24 squared plus 18 squared, or realize that this triangle is a 3, 4, 5, multiplied by 6, which means it's 18, 24, 30. And then the diagonal length equals 30 inches. That is our lesson on understanding the basic start of area. Thanks for listening. Have a good evening.